Hello, my friend. On today's episode, I'm speaking with Pete, and we're talking about the importance of having a great low barrier offer, a great way to let people try before they buy your regular gym memberships or services. And Pete recently changed his approach to having a low barrier offer at Cressy. So he shares his strategy and what he's learning from his new approach. So if you're someone who is doesn't never had a low barrier offer and you want to make one for the first time, or you have one and you're looking to make a pivot and make it even more effective, this is a great episode for you to help level up your ability to convert leads with a great low barrier offer. So keep on listening. Hello, fitness business nerds. What's up? Welcome to another episode of the Business of Unicorns podcast. Before we dive in today with Pete, I just want to give a quick shout out to our Instagram account at Business for Unicorns. We're going to link to it down below in the show notes, but if you're not following us on Instagram, please go and follow us. We put out some great content snippets from this podcast, great snippets from our emails that we send out to our email list. We also engage people in real conversation in our DMs. So if you have questions about how to run your gym or any of the content we put out, including content from this uh, these episodes, please go follow us on Instagram and shoot us a DM. We're happy to talk to you there. Uh, again, link in the show notes. Uh, Pete, welcome, my friend. How's your day going? Very well. Spring has sprung. In good Spring spirit. has sprung. <laughs> so much so that you, listeners, you might hear in the background, there's some yard work happening in my yard that Pete and I were listening to <laughs> before we started recording. So if you hear a leaf blower, just know that progress is, is happening in my yard. <laughs> um, that being said, let's talk about today's topic, which I think is a, a really big one. And we're going to maybe just talk about a sliver of it. But what we're going to talk about today is low barrier offers. What are they? why you should have one and some experience you've had recently, Pete, of changing yours and the results that you've experienced. So maybe let's just start with maybe, Pete, you want to start us with like, what the heck is a low barrier offer and why should people have one? Oh, low barrier offer is what it sounds like. Opportunity to get people to take a risk on us at a relatively low commitment point and experience our expertise and, and then potentially sign on longer term. There are a couple different in my operation because we are, as you know, a performance training facility. And so our our low barrier offer that has existed since the day we started, LBO for for more efficient description moving forward, uh, the LBO is $99 initial evaluation here. It's been that way since the yeah. day we started. I don't see it changing. It's enough money that we don't feel like we resent giving away 75 to 90 minutes of our time in this one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. format, but not so much that it scares people off. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of like a performance training iteration. But what we will ultimately talk about today in some depth is an LBO we have for our strength camps, which is just group training for adults, adult fitness. And I think that'll yeah. be probably something that speaks more to the most common audience member mm -hmm. here and the most common Unicorn Society member. But I, I obviously have thoughts on both. What is yeah, your totally. interpretation of an LBO, if different in any way? Yeah, totally. 100% we're on the same page. I think, you know, classically, we think of this as like an opportunity for, for people to try before they buy. Right. So it's a chance to test drive the car before you decide you want it. Um, and uh, ultimately, you want there to be really kind of no conditions. Right. You want this to be a really easy. Yes. Like it's such a great offer with so with no strings attached that it's kind of a no brainer to do it. So I think what we recommend for most unicorn study members who do like one on one or small group or large group um, is that you offer a low barrier offer that's basically unlimited visits for two weeks for under a hundred bucks. That's kind of our sweet spot. So what most unicorn side members wind up doing is something like two weeks of unlimited small group personal training for $79 or $99. I think to your point, it's enough money that there's some skin in the game. It's enough money, you know, they can maybe afford what the real membership costs. Um, and two weeks is a long enough time to know whether they like it, but not too much that they've settled into a routine and are no longer, no longer has that fresh car smell. So I think that's, you know, generally how we think about like the best practices, but given different programs that you're selling to different avatars, you might need a different kind of low bear offer. So, you know, MFF, we've tried everything from free visits to free weeks to free months to more mid ticket offers right, that cost hundreds of dollars to high ticket offers. Right. And so we've tried them all, but I think for most people, most of the time listening to this, there's some version of a week or two 
of all your services that people can try for under a hundred bucks is kind of going to be the sweet spot for most of you. Yeah. Anything you would add to that? No, that's the number I like. I'm, I'm happy to see yeah. that you and I are, are preaching the same message with, <laughs> without having practiced yeah. it. <laughs> Totally, totally. Yeah, I think we're all on the same page there. I'll say before we dive into your example, I just want to answer one very, or we can both answer a very common question, which is, if the gym, if, if our listeners have a gym that they offer more than one service, should the low barrier offer include them all? Or should they have separate ones for separate services? Um, I mean, I'll go first this time. And you can tell me whether you agree or disagree. My recommendation has always been, just let it include everything. Let them come for two weeks and try whatever you have to offer. And you can limit how many of each they have if that's valuable to you, right? So for example, at MFF, we have both large group and small group training. So I'd be happy for them to come as, to as much or as little of those things as they want for two weeks. <laughs> whatever fits in their schedule, whatever works for them. But we could, we've could we also done it where it was you know, uh, two cl large group classes per week and one small group personal training per week. I think that's fine. But the idea of a low barrier offer is they come in and they try all the things they could do. And then you sit down with them and help them make sense of their experience and make a recommendation for how they could achieve their goals and continue with specific services. But I like having like a sampler platter, you know, where people can try it all. Do you agree? Would you say anything different about that? Well, I have to say I disagree because I already opened the show by telling you I have two different LBOs. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so Perfect. That's, I don't want to be awesome. a com <laughs> complete hypocrite here. Um, these are such extremely different service offerings. Though. That's why. Yeah, I would and, agree with that. That makes sense. And the thing to note is that they are they happen at entirely different times of day, so they almost don't even know each other exist. When I say strength mm -hmm. camp here, that's just three mornings a week. It's Monday, Wednesday, yep. and Friday, and it happens in like that 5.30 to 8.30 a.m. range, whereas the semi-private model we run is afternoons and evenings. So yep. there are... I don't have a lot of concerns about overlap or confusing misinterpretation of LBOs because those two communities just never touch, which is yeah. why we have differentiated branding strategies. It's CSP strength yeah. camps and then everything else is just train at CSP. And so I think that, it's, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I think, you know, I think one of the ways to, to think about that is that for each avatar, you might want to have a low barrier offer, right? So I think there's certainly listeners who have both um, kids and youth athlete programs, which are separate from their adult programs. And certainly I'm not suggesting there should be one low barrier offer for both of those very different avatars. But mm -hmm. anyone who's doing a certain kind of service should be able to have try all the services that apply to them when possible unless like you said there's some unique kind of program that's that's really carved out separately in all your marketing then that makes 100 percent sense i think we're we're totally on the same page yep and so the only place where we've scratched out a little bit of overlap is yeah. in specifically i don't want high school athletes to sign up for our adult fitness preschool yep. hours type thing so I don't even need that population to know it exists, but we do occasionally upsell our strength campers into a blend of the two. So mm -hmm. an offer that is standing for our strength campers is if you pay for our once a week semi-private training rate, you can get our strength camps plus once a week, which is a really yeah. awesome deal. Uh, but they basically get one day of individualized programming in the afternoons that in theory complements their strength camps and it gives them a taste of the afternoon offering without us going all in and writing them like super comprehensive programming that's going to conflict with what they do in the mornings and yeah. what quite commonly happens i'd say more often than not happens is they upgrade into an unlimited version of our afternoon model so they become twice yeah. as profitable and they get a more comprehensive training experience um, we don't sell it all the time to everyone in fact there are a number of members of the community that my team would be like, please, God, don't invite them to the afternoons. They're <laughs> like, they'd be so, they'd be so coaching intensive, or maybe they'd be such a, a cultural mismatch for the community we have. So it's not something that I advertise. It's something that we use. We handpick certain individuals where like, oh, this person would be a total awesome fit for the community in the afternoons. And they've got some flexibility. Let's make that offer. Yeah, I think it's a great example of like, there, you know, you have multiple kind of low barrier offers in your back pocket, you offer at different times. So I think that makes that makes perfect sense that you're going to offer that in conversation with people you've probably already been working with, or at least been having conversations with. So that makes sense. And I think that's probably a different series of offers than what is 
publicly marketed to leads on your website and through you know social media, et cetera. So that all yeah, that so all it's not an introductory LBO. Actually, if you think about it, you have to earn the yeah. right to get that pitch, and it takes more than a month of training with us for us to conclude. Oh, this person's a fit elsewhere. Let's see if we can get yeah. them to spend a little more to get our best offering. Love that. Love that. All right. Well, let's dive into the recent experience you had by switching your LBO. So you want to kind of walk through what you were doing before, what you changed and, you know, and what you've learned so far. Yeah. So for the longest time in our strength camps, we offered a trial month at $99. And to give the audience some context, our current pricing strategy for this long term is month to month at 179 or quarterly at 159 a month. So $477 quarterly payments, if you commit to it. And <clears throat> excuse me, that $99 trial month is by definition an LBO. Come on in and get it close to 50% off of, or in excess of 50% off of our traditional month to month rate. And it's appealing and it creates opportunities. But my business partner, John, came to me in the last six to 12 months and said, I'm tired of the $99 LBO. Let's just do a free week and see what happens. Just give them three free classes. Mm -hmm. I think we'll close. Let's do it. And we did that and everybody closes. Everyone. Mm -hmm. And so we had to take a step back and ask ourselves like, all right, what changed here? It's not that we weren't closing business before, but we weren't touching 100% conversions. Mm -hmm. And in hindsight, realize a couple of trends. The first of which, if you have a 30-day trial, that is 23 more days that things could potentially go wrong in relation <laughs> to the seven day trial we have a lot yep. of exposures to um, potential mishaps or just like vaguely underwhelming. It doesn't yeah, necessarily get comfortable. Like, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so in our experience, it's, it's not that we were losing a ton of people because there was like massive fires to put out, but it's hard to be perfect in 12 sessions, whereas it's a lot easier to be close to perfect in three quick structured sessions. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think that, you know, and it's kind of sometimes small tweaks like that to a low bear offer that can really get uh, traffic flowing again, right? To go from, you know, a paid month to a free week, right, is fantastic. Even if you went from a, a paid month to a paid week, that might have been enough to to move the needle. But I think, I think I've, I've seen time and time again, both at MFF and with our unicorn society members that shorter is better, right? It's like, it's like when you at a restaurant and you mm -hmm. order that appetizer and you're like, damn, I didn't realize this was going to be so big. I might not even need my entree, <laughs> right? Like I'll just take my entree to go. I think when people have like a month or longer low barrier offer, it's like, well, I'm kind of settled. I came for, I wanted, I learned how to do this stuff. I learned I can do this maybe even on my own. I don't need you all anymore, or I'm so comfortable that I'm less likely to be excited about dropping twice as many much money for the next month, right? So I think shorter really is better. One or two weeks is all people need to know whether or not they like you. Yep. And well, and to build on that, the second lesson we learned is that it's pretty easy to manufacture tangible opportunities to perceive our expertise over mm -hmm. uh, a three day scenario. So yeah. for example, we know the hurdles that these athletes or clients, forgive me, I, you know, I call everybody an athlete. I'm calling the 65 totally. year old grandmother <laughs> an athlete and it's just habit. Um, these clients are going to get through certain sticking points in that process and we can anticipate it and we can manage those expectations. So if we say, Hey, come on in on Monday for your first session of your trial rate, you're going to enjoy it. They come in, they do their free class. And we catch them on the way out the door and we're like, hey, quick heads up. You're going to be sore as shit on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And when you wake up and that alarm goes off, you're going to say, well, I don't want to do this. And yeah. I'm begging you, come do it. We're going to we're going to modify your programming to make sure you're comfortable getting through it. You were going to leave here thrilled that you did. And you got to trust us here. And so exactly that happens. They come back in and we say, hey, bet you're a little banged up, huh? Yeah, I'm really, I'm dying here. Mm -hmm. And we say, yeah, go hop on the bike. Just get get warm. We're going to take care of you. I'm going to adjust a couple things. I'll bet you're sore here, here, and here. 
And they're like, oh, what kind of witchcraft is this? You know what I'm feeling? And we're like, we wrote the program. We know exactly what we're doing here. And we say, you're going to feel great by Friday and you're going to have some momentum going into the weekend. And they come back Friday and they've got a great week of training behind them. The soreness is kind of passing and they are just at like kind of the apex of their experience with us. If I thought this mm -hmm. took two weeks, we'd be doing a two week free trial or a two week paid trial. But at the end of yeah. three, it's like a sweet spot and it's a great time to ask for the sale. And controlling those touch points makes us look like an expert every step of the way. Yep. Yeah. I think that's so beautifully said, Pete. And the, and the way that you laid out your ability to anticipate their needs, you know, anticipate their reactions to get in front of that and make them feel really seen and supported. Like we know what we're doing. We got this mm -hmm. right. Yep. Um, and if you believe us for this first week and we can kind of read your mind and read your body, <laughs> just imagine what we can do for, you know, three months or a year, or five years, right? It really does give people a sense of, wow, this is so worth the investment. I must stick around if you could really wow them for a week or two. Uh, so I think that's such a great, that's such a great takeaway. So um, yeah, those party tricks aren't, you can't do those every week long term either. <laughs> so no, you gotta, no. got to use those early and often. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Um, all right. Well, I know um, we're going to wrap it up soon because we were recording a short one today, but anything else about this LBO experience? You know, I guess one question I have for you is how oftentimes when we switch up an LBO, sometimes the team themselves has take some time to adjust to this new experience. What's What's this been like for your team so far? I don't see this as having been a lot of pushback because as of late, John has been the one delivering the service. It's been his yeah. choice as we head into the spring. He said, I, I want to adjust my schedule because he coaches high school baseball this time of year. And yeah. by being the guy who picks up the morning shifts, he can give the staff some extra rest and he can be the one who's who's executing on this new initiative. And since it's his idea, I've had no pushback. So I know that's sure. not the answer you're looking for here, but I no, will tell okay. you that there are some interesting opportunity here that that we occasionally exploit. And that is, if we know that we've got a single trial going on, and we don't generate a ton of leads for our strength camps, we just, as you know, don't pour a ton of resources into developing what is not one of our core competencies. It exists, yep. does okay. It's growing little by little, very slowly. Um, but when we do this, it's usually there's one or a maximum of two of these going on. And we know exactly what time those people are coming. And if we want to, we can staff up. So sometimes John will say to an intern, hey, I'm going to let you have the whole afternoon off tomorrow if you can come in and you can shadow and help out during strength camps tomorrow morning. And then when they get here and he says, hey, at 630, I've got someone on a trial class. I'm going to have you lead warm ups and I'm going to slide off to the side with them and I'm going to take them through some individual stuff. And we can just perfectly craft this staffing dynamic. So we over deliver, over deliver, over deliver for the new person. And we introduce a new face to the room and we can do those in one-off times. And I'll acknowledge not everybody has interns, not everybody mm -hmm. has that kind of flexibility with their calendar. But if you do, it's a cheat code of sorts that gives us an opportunity to make it that much more likely we're going to close these. And so yeah. I'm taking what you positioned as potentially a negative and telling you how we, <laughs> we had a positive game plan shift, but Let's circle back to this in a couple months because we are pivoting out of a full-time John morning scenario as the summer is starting. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. have a three-headed monster of staff members delivering the service starting in the next two weeks. And yeah. we're going to see how it goes. Yeah. Well, I think even what you shared, there's some great takeaways for our listeners, right? That if you're going to have a new library offer, the person who's delivering that service, who's selling it, who's going to be interacting with the clients the most, they better believe in it, right? They better be able to, you know, to, to deliver that one week experience with real confidence and expertise. So they have to be bought into that idea, which obviously John is for you. Um, and sure. I think the other thing I heard in there is, which is you all have an explicit goal to kind of over deliver. Right, and you have the extra added value of interns, which gives you some capacity flexibility, which listeners might not have, but they might be able to find other ways to make sure they're over delivering above and beyond what they even promise people during a low barrier offer. And that sense of um, exceeding their expectations, that kind of surprise and delight that you can give people in the first week or two, like everyone can do that in different ways, whether you have interns or not, right? And it's that kind of mindset, I think is a real great takeaway for our listeners. 
Yeah, definitely. Making yeah. sure the, yeah. the person delivering the service knows what's at stake. Such a good point. Yeah, totally. Um, awesome. Well, thanks for a great conversation, Pete. I think this is a great one. I think listeners, what we have, I'm hoping you're taking away is that LBOs are important. You have to have a really great offer, a really great experience you're giving people for a week or two. And whether it's a free week like Pete is trying out right now or a paid month, uh, there's got to be some way to let people try before they buy and, a, uh, and for you to give them a real taste of what it would be like to stick around long term. And so if you have any questions, head over to that Instagram link in our show notes, DM us. We're here to help. Um, but thanks again for the great conversation, Pete. I'll see you on the next one. Talk soon. Thanks, Michael. 